the condition of the gravitational field of the planet which is providing more field forces for the carbon balance to be in operation that the nitrogen itself becomes irrelevant. Now, every element of the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen is there to feed, so the plant grows faster. Right, so we're going to do a bit of uh, nature today, and um, Dr. Gatwa, I think you are here, you'll be joining, uh, we'll be sharing this presentation because I'll do a couple of slides and then Dr. Gatwa will take over. Um, Dr. Gatwa runs the private agricultural teachings um, in, with, with the KXSI in the, in the uh, private student area there, so um, he, they focus on all agricultural aspects and, and trying to develop this technology in agriculture. So Dr. Gatto will come in just now. What I'm going to do today is just to go through, a and, and Dr. Gatto as well, is we're going through a couple of uh, people's experiments that they've done around the world and just the feedback that we've gotten from people. And um, it's, it's just a nice to show that from all parts of the world, people, we, we're getting very similar results um, and it's irrelevant of where we're growing uh, plants. It's uh, we're getting the same nice results by using the ganses and in various using the ganses in any which way people have been playing with. So I will start off with um, the some of the work and experiments done by uh, fellow chap here in Australia. Um, he lives in Western Australia, uh, Mr. Ross Martin, and he done quite a nice lot of work on that. And next couple of the slides are all his with, um, so there's a lot of information in his slides there. Just in terms of his brief background of his, of his region and where he's growing, um, it's mainly uh, wheat and sheep production that he's involved in and in it's very hot dry summers uh, which is across most of Australia here um, and in general as you were saying fruit and vegetables are not grown due to lack of water um, so what he did was he tried different uh, plasma technology used it in different ways and um, he tried to grow different produce and these are the results The first one was with um, a tomato plant. And what he had done was um, he had filled uh, different ping pong balls uh, with uh, CO2, uh, CH3 and, and copper. And so he used just different amounts in each of the balls so that he could form a gradient so that there would be a flow between each of the, the ping pong balls. He'd also placed a tube. So that's just a plastic vinyl tube filled with a liquid plasma water as well and he placed this around the, the stem of one of the plants which he said was sort of appeared to be growing quite slowly. He'd also hung many of these ping pong balls um, in his other fruit trees. The one was his uh, pink lady apple tree um, and we hung with the uh, ping pong balls and what he said was the fruit was sweet juicy and he produced quite a high yield off that of that uh, apple tree now a lot of the cases with agriculture and when you start trying to do experiments in agriculture it's very difficult to compare so the only way that a lot of the farmers can compare and 
give results is based on previous years of observation and yield. So, you know, when somebody notices a difference, um, statistically, it's almost more than 20% of a difference. You know, under that, we don't really notice much. So when a farm or somebody notices a change and notices a higher yield compared to previous years, then there is certainly has been that change. But as I say, in agriculture, it's, it is difficult to do a direct comparison. Now, this next slide is quite busy, but it's showing you the effects on one of his cucumber plants. Now, in number one, that's on the top left. There he was showing that um, this cucumber was sort of, the flower was starting to die and it looked like that the whole plant had sort of finished its, its growth period. So he hung a couple of these the ping pong balls filled with a, with a liquid plasma all over around the plant there. You can see there in picture number two. And then when you look down at the bottom, basically what happened was the plant started flowering again. So it almost gave it a second lease of life. And it started growing, new cucumbers were growing and it sort of reinvigorated that plant, it gave it a second lease of life and he produced lovely cucumbers from that plant, which we, he thought was at the end of its uh, life cycle. Now, what he had noticed was hanging the uh, ping pong balls around his tomato plants in the beginning. When you see the next photograph, when it does eventually come through. There you see on the left would have, would have been the uh, tomato plants with all the plasma balls that were hanging. And what he had noticed was that the punkiums growing on the ground in that immediate vicinity around these tomato plants, um, he noticed that there were a lot more, the, the color was dark greener and the growth was, was far better than further away from that field. So just those ping pong balls hanging around the, the tomato plant had created quite a nice environment and extended quite far from that tomato plant. And there it grew, grew lovely um, punkiums there for him, for him there. So it was just noticing the effects of the field, you know, and how far that, that, that field interaction and how far it created an environment around those tomato plants. And as I said before, when you're doing any agriculture experiment, you really have to observe because you might only notice some subtle differences in the beginning. So just be very, very observant with, um, what you're doing in the plant surrounding any experiment that you're doing. So now the other one was on some of the other tomatoes that he was growing, a different variety. Um, it was a gross Elisa tomato plant. And the photograph on the top left was uh, before he had applied any, any of the plasma. And uh, there's photograph number two. So he placed five or six ping pong balls all around there and he had beautiful ripe fruit. Um, now some plants showing developing fruit. Now he had unprecedented success with this plant because as in this past experience, um, these plants have always been subjected to wilt and red mite attack. Um, and generally in the very dry conditions like this, the large tomato plants don't grow very well. Um, and that was autumn time for him and the heavy fruit was growing, continuing. So the tomato plant was quite happy to continue to grow into the autumn period. And um, he was also spraying his plants with the liquid plasma water as well. Um, and was trying to see how far they would develop through into the winter months. He'd also done another variety of tomatoes, um, and these were the beefsteak tomatoes, also a large variety. And again, just hanging ping pong balls with different gradients around it to create a nice flow. 
And um, there he had also lovely tomatoes coming through. And as he said in the past, he had very little success, success in growing this variety in that particular area. So, you know, it just shows that by using the plasma, we're able to now start growing plants that don't, don't generally grow, like to grow in a certain area, or are now able to, to grow in that area. Now, this next slide could have quite a lot of potential opportunities and will certainly require more, more research. But what it found with um, fruit fly, uh, which is a very big problem all over Australia and many parts of the world, is that when it attacks it, the fruit, um, then that the larvae just goes into the fruit and um, you just have rotten fruit and, and can attack your whole, your whole crop. Now, what he found was we, when he picked up some of these apples off the ground, and as you say, he'd cut them through and you can see, um, it looked like there had been an appearance of the fruit fly attack with the pictures there. Um, and as I said, two years ago, it destroyed the whole crop on that particular tree. However, the fruit fly stings are evident, but over three days, the larvae have not hatched. So, his understanding was that maybe this plasma field that created an immunity to the pest or somewhere the, the, the plasma fields had interacted with that larvae so that they could not develop any further. And the problem with fruit fly in general is when it lays its, the larvae and the rotten fruit falls on the ground, then that, that larvae goes into the ground and comes again following season. So it's a year after year problem. But if you're able to do this after a couple of years, one could easily eradicate that problem in your area quite nicely. So this certainly is a big area for research in the future. So the summary that that uh, Ross had, had put together on, on his experience using the plasma in his, in his um, farm there was that by just by hanging different uh, ping pong balls around his trees or plants um, and he'd seen a beneficial effect on, on the fruit production. The plasma of CO2 and zinc is mixed, mixed with a small amount of um, CH3 and a little bit of copper um, produced these results for him. Um, he noticed plant growth was accelerated and very healthy within the fields. Um, and also the plants appeared to have enhanced immunity to disease and insect attack. And this we're finding all over the world as well. And uh, plants coming to the end of their production cycle can be reinvigorated to extend their production period. And um, he said spraying the plasma combined with it different methods of ping pong balls or bottles appear to give the plants immunity to weather extremes as well. Uh, fruit production is dramatically increased and size remains good. So, you know, what he's seen here is, is quite nice overall changes in his production and I said it's compared to all the previous years where he's, he's produced. Another short picture here was from a um, series of pictures from Alex in Canada. Um, and it is what he'd been doing was throwing a lot of CO2 water into a, a little creek nearby where he lives. And um, it's very difficult to see on the pictures, but he had noticed quite a change over the, over the several weeks of how he had uh, changed his little pond and the life that was being created in the water and around the plant the pond and the, and the plants and that and so just by doing those little little things around our garden or in the river or stream nearby it's making quite a huge impact in the environment so we encourage a lot of people just to go and use the co2 water into into nature and and, and spread it into all these rivers and streams these were other pictures of, of his particular plants that um, he had noticed quite a lot of changes, um, larger leaves, uh, flowering at different times. So, 
you know, it's all these subtle changes that, that one observes and one can only obs know these changes when you grow in certain plants for a very long period of time. And then just a quick summary of, of our uh, experience with the growing tomatoes in winter as well is um, when we had come to the end of our summertime, we had a couple of tiny little baby seedlings, tomatoes, uh, which we had left over. So I had uh, decided to replant those and see how they grow. Also with the gains in the water. And these were also baby tomato plants. Um, so they don't normally grow very big. Uh, the next series of pictures just shows you their, their growth during the winter time. The first one was sort of midwinter in July for the Southern Hemisphere. And already they had grown quite large because normally they would only sit. We've tried it before a couple of years to grow tomatoes in the winter time. And they would only get, they would stay tiny, very small, look very unhealthy, look very sick and only start growing when spring came. But these were were growing very nicely, um, even in the middle of the winter. And the most obvious effect to me was how thick a lot of these stems were. Um, and particularly because it was a cocktail variety tomato. So the stems were particularly thick for, for growth during the winter time. And this was in September. So it was coming out of winter and, and early, early, and it had grown immense size um, during the winter time and had already had lots of flood, produced lots of flowers. Um, so it had grown entirely during this winter period without any greenhouse at all. And there's just a close up of the, the growing tips there and you can see how thick they are. And um, so that was very, very uh, a big, big notice for us as to how strong those plants were. And then in October, there we had huge bunches of, of tomatoes there already all starting to ripen and lots of flowers. So this had really taken off during that winter time. So our comments on that one was that we had grown, you know, these plants had grown through winter without being undercover in a greenhouse. And we'd been, would have been picking the fruit there end of October compared to maybe December, only January of previous years, um, which showed to us that traditional planting and harvesting seasons can be extended on either side of your growing, of your traditional growing seasons. And there's no need for expensive greenhouse greenhouse infrastructure. And the interesting feedback on, on this particular tomato plant is that it continued to grow during uh, the December time and we we're picking lovely tomatoes. And then as traditional summer here in Australia gets when um, we had a hot period of over 40 degrees uh, for, for at least a week. And um, this was just too much for the plant to cope with. And um, it was quite amazing to watch how fast this plant had, had just died. Within two weeks, the plant had just uh, died. And we had noticed that um, the tomatoes were perfect and beautiful. There was not one bit of um, attack by any insects. And then as soon as we had this um, huge heat change, then almost within days, the whole crop of tomatoes had been attacked by uh, the fruit fly. So, you know, the, we're still trying to under, get to understand this, but we're thinking that by creating the conditions and using the plasma around our tomato plants, it had managed to grow throughout the winter. But as soon as we had an extreme heat condition, and as we know, when we experience high heat temperatures, it's a change in the, and um, an increase in the magrav fields. And these were just far too high for what we had created around our tomato plant. And so we had almost a breakdown of that interaction um, and the tomato plant just could not cope.
So the pest control, which we've seen and a lot of other people have seen, is almost an, an, an I'll call it an unintended side effect of using the plasma, is because what we've seen and many other people have seen is, is almost a reduction in the effects of pests on your crop. Uh, we used to grow under netting and we don't anymore. All our crops are in the open and we just don't really have a problem of insects and, and caterpillars anymore. Um, and um, so what you're doing is when you're using the plasma is you're changing the whole environment around your farm. You're making your crop and produce a lot more healthier. It becomes happy. And when you have happy, healthy plants, then you're not going to have a pest problem. So we look at things on a completely opposite point of view now is that when we start seeing any uh, caterpillar or any other damage on our plants, then we know that our plants are unhappy and unhealthy. And so now we go and then look to find out and start changing things to make sure that they are uh, remaining happy and healthy. So for us, the pests have become our new friends in a way in letting us know the conditions of the plants as well. So it's a totally different view of looking at the pest side. All right, so I'm gonna hand you over now to um, Dr. Gatwa. And I think you've got these slides, hey, Dr. Gatwa, so it might be easy if you present from your side, because I think you've got better internet than me. Yes, I'll do that, uh, uh, Jimmy, thank, thank you very much. I'll just okay. share my screen. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, wonderful presentation, Jenny and Dr. Rodrigo. Um, I'm going to show just a few experiments that have been done in Kenya. These potatoes we are growing in Kenya, I actually grew this. But uh, first, uh, as an introduction, uh, I, I would like to, sh to say that seed soaking in CO2 liquid plasma helps a lot when you grow See, in terms of uh, seed decontamination. So uh, CO2 restores seed to their natural state through magnetic gravitational fields of the CO2, where seeds take what they need and remove what they do not need. Uh, you may have adulterated seeds, uh, GMO seeds, etc., and soaking of seed before sowing is recommended. Effective duration of soaking seed before sowing depends on seed size and seed hardiness, with the smaller seeds taking less time to decontaminate, while large, larger and harder seeds may take longer. A short duration, you may just take 15 minutes for some, some, some seeds, 15 to 30 minutes, can effectively decontaminate small seeds, while larger seeds and hard seeds may take several hours. Like uh, if you if you have potato tubers, I usually go for three to five uh, hours. There are also some legumes, especially clovers, uh, even alfalfa, have very hard seeds. That means they are, they are, they are, they, are, they have very hard seed coats. So we just uh, recommend that you expose. Even though these are fields, we are dealing with fields. They may not necessarily be. Uh, imbibing as such, but uh, it may be necessary to imbibe for the seeds to imbibe water so that uh, they get the fields of CO2. So some will generally take longer than others. Irrigate, irrigating field crops with CO2 liquid plasma enhances plant growth and plant health. So after you soak the seeds when you or before planting or before sowing, then you can follow in the field and irrigate using CO2 liquid plasma, also um, zinc oxide liquid plasma, and CH3 is also very good for energy. 
so that would uh, uh, enhance growth. Those three uh, liquid plasmas are very important for crop growth. CO2 liquid plasma is especially effective as it creates conditions for availability of the amino acid cohon, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, which then enhances plant growth, plant health, and crop yields. What CO2 does is actually uh, the carbon in CO2 uh, create uh, con contacts is the contact with, with the cohon in the uh, gaseous environment. So once the connection is made, uh, uh, CO2 has the ability to not only connect to the amino acid, but to bring it close and keep it there in the environment of plants so that it's continuously gives to the plant's growth. So the plants tend to grow very healthy and increase yields. These are uh, potatoes that I grew in Kenya. And these are just experimental plots. What we have learned is that uh, if, you, if you want to do very good experiments and you are testing whether some, excuse me, uh, if you're testing guns, for example, CO2, or uh, together with the uh, zinc oxide and CH3, what you want to, uh, uh, is that you have to space, you have to have different plots in different places. Like you separate them. Usually conventional, uh, in conventional agriculture, the way you do experiments is you grow them side by side and then look for which ones uh, grow better depending on the treatments you apply. Let's say, for example, if you are testing um, uh, CO2, liquid plasma, and you, you have a control, which you then treat with just water, plain water. Some you would irrigate with water. The other crops you would uh, irrigate with CO2, liquid plasma. Now, you need to have them separate in plasma. Uh, what we have learned out is that uh, land is that uh, plasma extends beyond uh, what one would think so that uh, if they are if the plots are very close together the effects of co2 extends to the effect to the crop that is for control so that uh, if uh, for example if you take any of these plots that are on the screen and one uh, you apply co2 and the neighboring one you apply water, there will, not be, there will be no difference because the effects of CO2, the, the fields extend beyond the boundaries of the plots you see. So uh, we separate plots by at least 10 meters and we are testing that continuously. So we don't have the exact uh, distance that we can recommend, but uh, at least five five to 10, uh, and then even more. Depends on the strength of the fields. They, they may, uh, especially if you have rotating cores, for example, that could uh, extend to miles. So uh, the basic thing here to, to learn is when you're testing, you separate them, separate the fields, keep some distance, and then you can test which one is effective for you because environments are not all the same. So this crop was very vigorous. I did not apply any fertilizers. I did not apply any chemical sprays. You can see how uh, healthy that crop is. This, uh, this was just guns, liquid plasma. Pests, um, insignificant. Diseases, insignificant. And the harvest, I had actually, these are what you see harvest from two different crops. The one to the left was the first one that I was harvested in February, on February 6, 2016. And then I grew another crop another time in a different place. And that was harvested in November 2016. And if you uh, if look closely here to the right, you have a lot of tubers in one potato plant. And that was amazing. That uh, shows uh, increased yields. Usually you have four, five, six big 
potato tubers, but in our case, we had even 20. So that was uh, very interesting. And this was just comparing yields. I would harvest and count them and then weigh them individually. And of course, I won't go to, into details. These are just a technique of uh, uh, having collecting data. So that's all I had for Kenya. And then um, now we move to Italy. Uh, Stefania grew, use, grew uh, parsley using liquid plasma, water of CO2 and zinc oxide. She gave water to the soil around the roots and sprayed the leaves with the plasma water. And this was done for 10 days. And then after 10 days, she left. And when she came back, two months later, the plants had grown like uh, four times the size before she left with very large uh, leaves. You can see to the left here, parsley. She was uh, actually surprised. She thought that couldn't be parsley because of how beautiful it was. I mean, in terms of growth, it was very healthy and very big. She thought it was too big for parsley. But then that shows uh, the effects of uh, those uh, liquid plasmas. And then here again, this is Canada. Marcus, Volk, Marcus, Volk. She, he grew pumpkins. And these pumpkins were all supposed to be like the pumpkin first in line, where you see the arrow, the bottom one to the left. But then, uh, and that one has a smooth surface, orange in color, according to the seed package. But uh, then when, uh, when he grew them with uh, liquid plasmas, they changed. You can see uh, the products above the, the first one. So they are not very smooth as the first one. They have various colors. So what may have happened? Uh, Marcos says all the seeds were treated with plasma water with, and the soaking was done overnight from ganses of CO2, zinc, and what he prepared as CH3 but may well as well have been deuterium due to the color he noticed, dark color. He had used magnesium salt, Epsom salt, uh, to harvest the ganses. Magnesium was used because it gives a very beneficial position for the plant for the production of chlorophyll. Another process that uh, Marcus used was to mix the plasma water in a blender in order to homogenize and increase potency of the plasma water. So if you uh, put uh, this in a blender, you uh, rotate it, you blend it, it releases energy. So it's more energized, the water is more energized. And this way, he says, only a small amount of guns is needed to make up a large batch of plasma water by adding more regular water to the mix. So the, the, those are the various colors and textures of the pumpkins that came from one that should have been smooth and, and yellow, pinkish. So what may have happened here is very, very interesting. Uh, we can use CO2 liquid plasma to decontaminate uh, seeds, but not only that, where, where you have mixtures, let's say you have two parents and then you hybrid the size. Uh, CO2 water can revert them to the originals. So if you have a, a mixed seed and then you use CO2 liquid plasma, you can generally go back to the mother and the father of the, of the one you, you planted. And this may be showing exactly that, but tests are ongoing. Uh, to summarize, these changes in condition have produced the following results for Marcus. Extended shelf life of uh, his food. He grew it in winter for extended seasons, coping with the extreme heat minimal pest damage, higher yields, healthy, happy produce, equals healthy, happy people. So you are not only growing uh, healthy crops, you are growing, you are supporting healthy people. 
helping to improve the whole environment in your area for all creatures. So this, this generally applies to not only Marcus experiments, but all experiments that use liquid plasma. These changes are only the beginning that we have seen and noted. We continue to do more research. and We have barely begun to use, the, to use and see this, the full potential. The full potential we have not achieved yet, but uh, we are slowly doing that so in agriculture.